a tree with a rope in the beginning. And um, <clears throat> how the elephant tried to escape and pull out and he couldn't, he couldn't, initially he couldn't. How much he wanted to be free, but it was still tied to the tree and slowly it gave up trying. And after some days, the Mahoth, the caretaker of the elephant, it cut, he cut the rope, but the rope was still around the leg of the elephant. The elephant was again used to being tied to a rope and never tried again, even if he was free. But still, he the mindset was built that I am tied to the tree and I cannot go anywhere else. I have to stay here. So that's the whole idea of tying the elephant to the rope. Are we, as a, an education system, trying to do that? Do, do our children study a lot or do they learn a lot? What do they do? They study a lot. They study a lot. Thank you for interacting ma'am thank you so much yes because you have an interaction anywhere in the park outside in the malls uh, you overhear people any uh, student if they are talking the parent in your neighbors also the community that you're living in you ask them um, okay uh, where are you these days you i don't see you outside in the park you're not playing badminton that's your favorite game what happened Ma'am, I have a test or auntie, I have a test tomorrow. I have an exam after three days or I have a, an assignment to be submitted within, you know, the next five days or something. So every time they have a target, they have a target towards academics. So obviously they are bound to something. But if we include that joy into that learning, the same books can do wonders. How can we bring that joy of books to this? So joyful learning, what does that mean? You had shared in the chat also. Interaction, bringing in excitement in the classroom. So anything else you'd like to share, please keep, keep writing on the chat. So I just love reading the... Uh, the conversation over here because it needs to be ongoing and uh, it would be really lovely if you keep writing something over there. <laughs> so yes, joyful learning to many people. It could be, I mean, it could be anything, right? It could be um, a class where there is a lot of interaction happening. There is some curiosity happening or uh, some activities there or um, some games on uh, based on some concepts that's also joyful anything else you have in mind please feel free to share so let's understand the learning ladder so i developed uh, i thought thought of this learning ladder when i was preparing for uh, the webinar i said okay which ladder would the child choose now the child is here. There are two ladders in front of the child. What, which one the, the child will uh, use according to you? Which, <laughs> which one they will choose? This ladder, the blue one with the blue rungs or uh, this one with the black one? Second one. The second one, this one? Yes, the black one. The black one. Okay. Yes. The second one, all right. So let's see. Small steps, ma'am. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's also a perception that, okay. And uh, there are many parents and many educators who would uh, want the children to take up this ladder. 
which is the second one, which is the black one. Now, all right, the child will climb up to this ladder, fine. Uh, the first step is easy. The second step is easy. The third is, you know, can you see the gap over here? And this one is a bit slant and then there is a huge gap. So what do you think? The child will take up the challenge or just give up? If he chooses yeah, the black, he'll, he'll, he'll take up the challenge? Not all, everyone and always. Yes, sometimes. That's true. Sometimes, yes. We have children who will choose this ladder or this ladder. So there is nothing in this slide that the child will choose this or this. So this was just an interactive slide where the child is just deciding on. And we have to actually bring both these ladders, the learning ladders to our classrooms, both of them. Maybe one year you have a classroom where you know, uh, if there are 40 children, maybe 35 children can climb this ladder. But five still need this one. And another year you will have to, 35 children want to climb this one. And the rest, five. So th that differentiation we need to understand and bring in that learning ladder in uh, into our classroom so that the joy of learning stays. So why is there a need to study less and learn more? In our classrooms, in the entire system, we our focus as educators is helping the children to read, to comprehend, uh, to understand basic number skills. But life is much beyond that. Are we doing anything for the beyond part of basic literacy, numeracy? And then what? What about the life skills? You know, it's very easy. I was uh, watching a conversation uh, on um, one of the channels today. And there they said that it's very easy to uh, teach them literacy, numeracy, but equally difficult to teach them the life skills. Soft skills, as they're called, they are not soft skills. They are really, really hard skills to be taught. So are we prepared to take up those skills in our classrooms? Some questions for a joyful classroom. Are the outcomes being achieved? How does joyful learning look like? What is the mindset of the parents, management, edu educators? Are children engaged in activities that are purpose-driven? And can we bring joy of learning in big groups? What are the challenges? Space, sometimes, yes. We need space. There is furniture. There are materials uh, to be moved. If we have to do any kind of activity, which is other than reading or writing or um, some kind of focused work. Infrastructure. This is, again, an issue, but... Uh, infrastructure, we needn't look at the, the money part of it, but even used paper can be a great resource. Used, um, any, uh, anything, any material which, is, which, which can be reused in your classroom can become a good infrastructure, a good part of your classroom. Number, the ratio of the teacher and student. This is huge. 
always and it's it's a, a block sometimes it can create a lot of confusion in the classroom because it is difficult to manage children there in that space with that number with one teacher doing everything and if you can bring that joy into the classroom with the number that means you are doing amazing stuff in your classroom the syllabus and the curriculum after uh, reading and uh, comprehension and the basic numerical skills grade 4 and 5 they go into sometimes you know simple interest and uh, profit and loss and uh, topics like that whereas there will be again there is huge gap between the in the children am among the children in the same class maybe some children are still struggling with uh, multiplication and division and this kind of gap in the classroom it affects in the senior school it doesn't show when they are in the juniors but if their foundation is not strong then they have huge difficulty as they go into higher classes so if their basic skills of numbers reading comprehension are strong and without going into the details of other topics which might not which can be taken in uh, the next class if we focus on the life skills i think they'll be better off that time so i have a lot of people saying identifying the areas of interest of the students yes that's uh, that's paramount that's really vital learning becomes easy long lasting yes so many so many people have uh, let me read so such wonderful comments are coming in apply the knowledge large size of the class true 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 i agree so i feel that and in the foundation stage the primary stage the teacher and the management has some kind of autonomy of uh, syllabus and curriculum you need to decide how much is too much or how much is too little or too less and then go accordingly time how much time yes <laughs> time the the moment um, it you know uh, whenever you have an activity you need time you need to um, have time for conducting that activity for planning that activity where will you find that time that is another a huge challenge flexibility and adaptability flexibility adaptability of uh, the parents flexibility of the school schedules and uh, flexibility i would say that sometimes uh, the management or um, you know i've been very lucky to be teaching in schools where there was complete freedom to teachers in the classroom complete freedom but i have heard where schools you know if the class is making too much noise that means the teacher is not teaching or <laughs> if the uh if the teacher is maybe sitting with a, a child talking to the child the teacher is just not teaching not hard working you know the, those kind of comments uh can really bring down the morale of the teacher so management and uh, people in higher position need to trust the teacher in the classroom that whatever they are doing is for the benefit of the students the well being of the students that trust factor has to be there adaptability by the parents also parents have to adapt to certain kind of um, activities that are done in school <coughs> children coming from different background we need to have we need to keep that in mind too 
some might not understand one particular language. So speaking bilingual could help understanding their culture, their language, from where they are coming, that would help in the classroom. Shared responsibility. Now this is like if a teacher is doing, especially in the primary classes, everything is put on the class teacher. So if there is a shared responsibility among uh, the co-workers, the subject teachers, the activity teachers, or anyone who could help, then that activity is done in the best possible way, rather than one person doing it alone, slogging it out. The outcome, we, you know, the focus is the outcome, how much the children are benefiting from it. So shared responsibility would definitely help. Class management. Now the class management is all about um, organizational uh, part, then the behavioral aspect is there. And how much of class management do we know to conduct that activity? Are we equipped with uh, the various um, aspects of class management that, okay, if I do this activity, this is going to happen. There'll be some behavioral issues. There'll be some noise over here and I need to shift this, that. So all that we need to keep in mind. Otherwise it becomes a huge challenge. What are the benefits of conducting activities or uh, joyful learning? Amazing benefits. There is freedom in the class. They are freedom to express, freedom to uh, do things which they, they otherwise hold themselves back from. So immense freedom is given in a joyful setup. Creativity, yes, again, it's an expression. They'll ask questions, any type of questions, and uh, they need to be encouraged for that curiosity to ask more questions and interact. Then inter, in, it develops inter and intrapersonal skills because it is through these activities that they collaborate, they listen to each other, they learn from each other better than they learn from the educator or the facilitator in the class. And they develop their own personal skills. So unlimited learning level can happen. Building empathy, kindness, and gratitude through these activities. Building rapport and community. Now, joyful learning doesn't happen uh, without a good relationship between the educator or and the students. You know, the students, children, we, we need to learn from the children how to forgive, how to love, how to laugh, <laughs> and how to be curious about everything and anything. They're so amazed with life. So if they're so amazed with life, join in their, um, their you know, that, that energy. So building a rapport with them is excellent and that will help building the communities who will also like to be a part of joyful learning. So yes, uh, shoulder relaxation, this was like, you know, if uh, there is joyful learning happening, there'll be less of books and uh, the bags will be lighter. There'll be more joy. Yes, and IP. So listening, learning, reading, and writing activities get activated. It's not that joy, joyful learning doesn't mean that children are not learning. The focus is learning, yes. And it can go to any level. They are not being tested on it, but they are being involved, engaged, and inspired to do all these things, to listen, to learn, to read, and to write. 
So there is immense focus on life skills through joyful learning. So this, these are the skills that come into the classroom if we include joyful learning. Nikita, Nikita, could you please uh, mute yourself? How can the planning be done for a better outcome? Does the thought drive you up the wall? Uh, will a plan help? Yes, it will, will definitely help because without the plan, it doesn't work at all, at all. You know, you feel that, yes, it's there. I, ha I know what to do. I'm doing this for 20 years. I'm doing it for 30 years. I'm doing it for, you know, <laughs> decades now. But still, I have uh, children coming to me. I still need the plan. Minute to minute, I need the plan for the children. Okay, this, 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 and this. They'll do this. And then two, three things extra also I keep just in case they're not interested or just in case there's something, some last minute confusion, three activities I keep ready. In a classroom of 40 children, 50 children, there'll be uh, like so many complaints. And if you have the plan in your mind, it goes for a toss because you're dealing with uh, those behavioral issues also. And then suddenly you feel, okay, what was I thinking? What, 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 what was I supposed to do after this, after that? So to avoid all that, have the blueprint ready. So fundamentals of planning beyond textbooks to make learning more joyful. So marking the calendar. Finding out the weather, the festivals, uh, the school functions, marking it, and then deciding on when you want to conduct a particular activity. It can be embedded into your daily routine also, but daily routine, if uh, you are adding those stories, you are adding those uh, recitation, the, uh, the poems and everything, a joyful learning where life skills are the focus, we need at least two hours in the classroom with the teacher. At least two hours. So we can decide according to the calendar and then go on. Or simply plan for the second half of the day. Second half of the day is the most challenging with the primary children. They come to the school, they're really happy or they get settled. They need that settling time. Uh, they're focused in the beginning. After they are full, their stomachs are full, all they want to do is go home. What do you do that time? Go for free play, do this, do that. That is the time for the joyful learning to take place. And it has huge benefits that time because they're off now, mentally off. So to bring back the focus, to bring back the concentration, to bring back the excitement into the classroom, you've got to do something which engages them fully. And know your class. What are their uh, learning levels, their pace, their understanding? Identify your class. Speak to the previous teacher. Sometimes that also helps. What are what the interests are? If the class is shuffled, then you can go through the anecdotal records if you want, and that will help you plan better. Approaches and pedagogies that you need to take care of if you have decided on any kind of uh, a lesson plan or anything. The topics. See, uh, the topics, uh, there are some topics given in the textbooks, right? So that you do. But life itself is a huge topic. And children come with a sense of self, great sense of self. They have, they're really confident. They know so many things. So they will give you the topics. You don't even have to hunt for the topics. They will give you the topics. And you will come to know of the topics from them. 
and of course some uh, initially in the initial part of the year you decide for as you uh, reach the mid session take the topics from them initially you can have those topics so there's no dearth of any topic uh, out there personal resources identify them okay we have how many minutes now one minute uh, we'll go to the second meeting and uh, the meeting will begin after five minutes so i'll see you after five minutes please do come back <laughs>